Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Bürkler. I am from the Peter Grünberg Institute of the Research Center in Jülich, Germany. I will talk about the novel ferrocene and pyrene-based cyclophane molecule that we chemisorbed on ferromagnetic cobalt nano-islands and investigated by spin-polarized scanning tunnel microscopy. In molecular spintronics, one tries to combine the rich diversity and functionality of molecules and the spin degree of freedom of electrons to develop non-electronic device concepts. In the traditional approach, one makes use of single molecule magnets. These are molecules with a magnetic moment and zero field splitting, such that the magnetic moment is blocked in either up or down direction below the blocking temperature. However, the achieved blocking temperature are still low, well below room temperature, and also the integrity and stability of these large complexes upon deposition of metal surfaces is an issue. This is why I want today focus on an approach using hybrid molecular magnets. <coughs> hybrid molecular magnets are formed upon the absorption of an aromatic non-magnetic molecule on a ferromagnetic metal surface like iron or cobalt. The hybridization between the molecule and the substrate is strong and spin dependent since the substrate has exchange splitting. This new unit formed by the molecule and the few atoms of the substrate, which are directly chemically bound to the molecule, form the so-called hybrid molecular magnet. And these new units have magnetic properties such as enhanced coercivity and blocking temperature. And this may be a route to room temperature molecular spintronics in the future. A nice example has been shown by Raman et al. They measured magnetotransport in mesoscopic tunnel junctions where they had an organic layer of relative large thickness, 40 nanometers, made from zinc methylphenol molecules. The bottom electrode was cobalt, the top electrode copper, and that means this is not a conventional magnetic tunnel junction, because there is only one ferromagnetic electrode. Nevertheless, it was possible to measure this kind of magnetoresistance of up to 25% <coughs> at almost room temperature. A microscopic explanation has been given by Nicuata de Resi in the same paper by DFD calculations. He considers the cobalt surface and just two layers of molecules which are arranged in this highly symmetric arrangement as shown here. He then extracts from the calculations the density of states first of the lower molecule. We can see broad bands, this is due to the interaction with the substrate, and there is also some spin imbalance. That means we induce a magnetic moment, and that means the molecule is a hyped molecular magnet. There is density of states at the Fermi level, the molecule becomes conductive. The density of states of the upper molecule, here the unoccupied states, show sharp features, but the LUMO is different for the spin up and for the spin down channel. This leads to spin-dependent work function, and if we now pass a current through this structure, this current will be spin-polarized and this will give rise to spin-filtering functionality. And this is the explanation for the data on the last slide. <coughs> However, an experimental confirmation of this spin-filter functionality on the microscopic single molecule level is still missing, and this is why we have designed and synthesized this molecule here. The idea is to have two ferrocene pillars which keep two pyrene parts in a parallel and ecliptic stacking at a distance slightly smaller than the van der Waals radius. <coughs> we found that we can synthesize this molecule in a one part synthesis using Suzuki coupling and in the following I will call this molecule the cyclophane. We have also synthesized a very similar molecule where only the upper pyrene part is missing and I will call this the reference molecule. We have then performed a crystal structure analysis by X-rays and we found that the cyclophane crystallizes in the same space group as the reference molecule, which has been reported only last year in this paper. The analysis also shows that the pyrene parts indeed have almost completely ecliptic stacking with just a small lateral offset of 0.5 angstrom. The vertical distance is 5.5. 3.52 angstrom and therefore slightly smaller than the distance in AA stacked graphite. The pyrene parts are slightly bent outward and this means that they interact and the interaction is repulsive. And this makes this molecule a model system for single molecule spin filter devices. We deposit both types of molecules by sublimation under the ultra high vacuum conditions 
uh, and the sublimation occurs between 500 and 600 Kelvin roughly. And the substrate is kept at a temperature below 100 Kelvin. The substrate in our case are cobalt nano islands on a couple one on one crystal. These are the islands in triangular shape. The red is the, the copper substrate. These islands have a thickness of two atomic layers cobalt and they show an out of plane magnetization. The magnetic properties of these islands have been studied before in literature and I will make use of this knowledge. This STM topography now shows cobalt nano islands with deposited cyclophane molecules. We see, for instance, here in the green circle a molecule on the cobalt, in the red circle a molecule on the copper. In both cases, the molecule appears as an elongated symmetric protrusion, and this indicates that this is a flat absorption geometry with the two ferrocene pillars standing upright on the substrate. On copper, we see indications of diffusion, such as this agglomerate formation here. There are no such indications on the cobalt islands, and therefore we conclude that the cyclophane is physisorbed to the copper, but chemisorbed to the cobalt. On the right, I show cross sections along the long axis of the molecule, here for copper, here on the cobalt island, and we can see a clear difference. There is a dip on the cobalt and other islands with a depth of about 55 picometer. And we assign this change of the appearance to a different electronic structure when the molecule is absorbed on cobalt. Frequently, we also observe such asymmetric molecules, which have an asymmetric cross section, and I call this the modified cyclophene molecule, and we'll come back to that later. This is similar data for the reference molecule. Again, there are molecules on the cobalt nano islands or on the copper. They have a similar appearance, and we conclude that they have a similar absorption geometry as the cyclophane. On the right, we see the cross sections, and now there are dips in both cases on copper and on cobalt. The dips on copper is about 55 picometer whereas the dip on cobalt has increased to 95 picometer. And again, also for this molecule, we see these modified versions. But let me first compare the appearance of the cyclophane on the cobalt surface with the appearance of the reference molecule on the copper. They look very similar. Both have a dip of about 55 picometer in the center. That means the cyclophane on cobalt looks as if the upper perine was missing, but of course, this is not missing, but this part of the molecule does not contribute to the conductance in the center of the molecule. So the conductance is lower and the STM tip has to approach the surface closer in the constant current mode. Therefore, we conclude that the absorption of the cyclophene on cobalt suppresses the conductance through this pyrene stack here. Now we turn to the modified molecules. We found that we can trigger the modification from the symmetric molecules to the asymmetric versions with the STM tip by applying bias voltages larger than one volt or high currents. We studied this modification in detail for both species of the molecules and we found that the modification of the cyclophane corresponds to a removal of a CP ring of one ferrocene and the complete upper pyrene. Unfortunately, this instability restricts our spectroscopic measurements that I will show next to bias voltages below one volt. These are spin polarized scanning tunneling spectroscopy data of the cyclophene taken with a chromium bulk tip. I show here the DIDV conductance maps at a bias voltage of minus half a volt. We have measured this image, this conductance map, after applying a positive saturating field and then setting the field to one Tesla during the measurement. In this situation, we can be sure that the tip magnetization shown here by green arrows and all mag island magnetizations point up and they're all in parallel. Then we sweep the field to minus one Tesla and can see clear differences, for instance, for this large island, which is bright here and dark here. This can be understood in the following way. The chromium tip reverses magnetization at about half a tesla. So when we go from plus tesla to minus one tesla, the magnetization of the tip flips from pointing up to pointing down, as shown by all these green arrows. The cobalt islands, however, show a reversal of the magnetization at a switching field that is field size dependent between 0.2 and 2.4 tesla. 
small islands, like those encircled in white, do flip their magnetization when we go from one Tesla to minus one Tesla. And that means here we go from a parallel alignment of tip and island magnetization up to a parallel alignment of tip and island magnetization down. Large island, larger islands, however, have a larger switching field and they do not reverse the magnetization when we go to minus one Tesla. And in this case, we go from a parallel configuration to an anti-parallel configuration. And under this condition, we can extract magnetic information for these large islands and the molecules attached to them. The best way to look at this magnetic contrast is to look at the spin asymmetry. This is defined as the difference between the two measurements divided by the sum. And you can show analytically that this spin asymmetry is equal to the product of the sample polarization times the tip polarization. Since we keep the tip polarization fixed during the measurement of such a frame, <coughs> we can directly say that this spin asymmetry is proportional to the sample polarization that, as we can see here, varies as a function of lateral position. And next, I want to focus on this island here, which has two cyclophane molecules attached to it. Molecules are again shown here. And on the right, I plot the cross-section along the long axis of the molecule. And we see that the asymmetry is about 15 to 20 percent on the cobalt next to the molecule. When we move across on top of the ferrocene side, the asymmetry drops to minus 15 percent and it is close to zero in the center of the molecule. The fact that we observe a hybridization induced spin polarization at the ferrocene sites which is almost equally in size to the cobalt narrow island, but inverted, pointing in the opposite direction, indicates that the molecule forms a hybrid molecular magnet. In order to understand the vanishing spin polarization above the perrine stack, we have to consider the following model. <clears throat> this is a side view of our molecule schematically, and these are the relevant frontier orbitals. There are two pi orbitals on the perines, and since the perine perine distance is slightly smaller than the van der Waals distance, these orbitals overlap and interact in the center of the molecule. This is the situation in the gas phase. After physisorption to the cobalt substrate, this situa situation does not change strongly and we still have an overlap in the center of the molecule. However, if the molecule is chemisorbed to cobalt, there is a strong hybridization between the lower pi system and the cobalt states. And this has two effects. It renormalizes the energy of this pi state here. And it also displaces this orbital slightly towards the cobalt nano island. And this means that the pi pi system increases and this interaction overlap in the center of the molecule is decreased. Taking these two effects together, we can then explain the suppressed conductance through the center of the molecule because there is no pi pi transport channel anymore and all the current has to flow via the pi scenes. But this is also suppressed because these uh, frontier orbitals are bisected by a nodal plane at this position here. The model also explains the absence of the spin polarization on the upper pyrene. The lower pyrene is definitely spin polarized due to the hybridization with cobalt but there is no pi pi mediated spin dependent renormalization of the upper pi system. So this pi system is not spin imbalanced. This brings me then to the summary. I have shown you the synthesis and spin polarized scanning tunnel in microscopy investigations of a pyrene and ferrocene based cyclophane molecule with ecliptic pi stacking. We found that the chemisorption of cobalt suppresses the conductance through the pyrene stack in the center. And we have also seen a strong and inverted spin polarization induced into the ferrocene parts, but no spin polarization on the upper pyrene. We explain both uh, observations in a model which takes into account the fact that the chemisorption on cobalt weakens the pi pi group in coupling in the perine stack. In general, we have found that the surface chemisorption can modify intramolecular electronic couplings and consequently also magnetic interactions. Finally, I would like to thank my co-workers. The molecule has been synthesized in the group of Paul Kögler at the Peter Grünberg Institute and at the Aachen University. And all the experiments were performed at the Peter Grünberg Institute 
And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.